I've got a very interesting watch on the channel today, guys. This is from Borealis. And before you start saying, oh, there's an elephant in the room, because I don't know much about elephants. I know about watches. I don't know about elephants. I want you to have a look at this watch because back in the day, back in the 60s, the cases were wider. They were much thinner in their profile, as you can see, and they featured things like boxed sapphire crystals. You can see that it's got its hues from Omega. It's borrowing from a case from the 1960s, the Omega Military Seamaster 300, reference number 165024. So I think what Borealis has done, they've drawn their inspiration back from the 60s, a case that Omega no longer makes. Today's cases with the Omegas, they're basically slightly more slab-sided, a bit thicker, but this vintage-inspired watch is quite an interesting piece. And you can see the dial. The dial is basically a taken inspiration from a modern Seamaster Railmaster. And I know that for a fact because I've got my Seamaster Railmaster on. And these watches are giving me a completely different vibe. And the reason I say that is because this is a sunburst style sunray dial. It's a very uh, glitzy sort of a, a, a dial. However, matched up with that vintage case, it's a very unusual look. So I'm gonna share with you guys the qualities of this watch, what Borealis has done. The rest of it's up to you. Now you saw the pop-up, Borealis has sent out this watch for review. I don't know if to send it back. However, they have no input into the review content. Let's get into its dimensions. I measure a case diameter of 41.4 millimeters. The case height, I measure at 12.6 mil. The lug to lug distance is 46.5 and a lug width of 20 mil. Now that crown is a 6.3 millimeter signed screw down crown and the total weight size to my 18 centimeter wrist comes at 140 grams. The watch also offers 200 meters of water resistance. Now I did mention that the case height is 12.6 millimeter to the top of that box sapphire crystal. However, without that sapphire, I measure 9.5 mil and that's an impressive height for a watch of 41 and a half. It, it fits and sits really flat on the wrist. And you've probably already noticed that the lug to lug distance I've, I did mention was 46.5. However, this has got male end links, which brings that out to 53.3. That's one of the changes that will be taking place in the production version. It will feature female end links. Now on the wrist, this watch has been a very interesting experience. And I, I say that for a reason because I've worn my fair share of modern Omegas and this doesn't fit or wear like a modern Omega, it's, it's, it's very thin. It's very vintage and very thin in that profile, in that height, at, like I said, 9.5 mil. So that's been a, a sort of an eye opener and I, it'd be great, you know, Omega doesn't use this case anymore. It's a damn shame because it's such a pleasurable experience as a sports watch, it's wonderful. That bracelet is an absolute killer on this watch. It's so comfortable, it just seems to adhere to the wrist. The comfort factor has been superb. The way that the bracelet articulates on the wrist, it's really well made. It's got screw pins, as you can see, a very highly polished swivel, press clasp, as well as a highly polished flip lock. There you go. It also offers four micro adjustments. And that's that's one of the letdowns I feel of the watch, this press clasp. Only, I only say that only because of the quality and finish of the watch has been very, very good. Now the movement in this watch is a Miyota 90S5 automatic. And I think that in part has got to do with the fact that it's so thin, that that profile is so thin, which is really cool. And the action of that movement, in fact, that crown has been fantastic. The screw down experience of this has been really good. 6.3, the knurling is great. We click it out once, it hacks. We can adjust the time, away you go, lock that in. The winding experience has been quite good for a Miyota. It's not rough, which is really cool and the latch down, the screw down experience, first time, and you've got 200 meters of water resistance. Now, if we have a look at the dial on this watch, you can see there's a lot of uh, bling or sun ray effect on this thing, on the silver dial, and it does take its inspiration from a modern day Seamaster, Railmaster, there's mine. So the layout is very similar. The main difference is the indices, this one here, they're applied, as you can see, loom filled. You're getting a completely different feel from a watch like this, however, the general layout is pretty much the same. Now, speaking of that loom, the watch features Swiss RC Tritec BGW9. On those indices, on those hands, that lollipop seconds hand, the quality, the application, and the legibility has been superb. So I think, look, Borealis has done a really good job regarding what they've made, how they've finished this product. They've not really cut any corners. So what are the pluses and minuses of this particular watch? Well, for me, top of the list, 
some might find this too much Omega. In its design, in its, uh, you know, inspiration, all the rest, there's a lot of Omega coming off this watch everywhere. And yeah, we call it the elephant in the room, I get it, but being a 1960s case, you know, something that's no longer available, no longer made, I love that. I, I love that, you know, we don't have these watches in today's uh, market. Omega should be producing this, it's stunning, it's so thin. It's so, uh, its profile is wonderful. So that's something that Omega should be bringing back. Unfortunately, we're chasing more specifications on these in-house movements with more power reserve, better magnetic resistance, all the rest, and we're getting thicker and thicker watches. That press clasp is also a potential negative. And I only say that is because the quality of the rest of the watch is very, very good. And that press clasp seems to be just that little bit down in quality as compared with the rest of the design. Albeit, the comfort is great. Four micro adjustments, I've not moved it. It's been fantastic on the wrist. So just saying, the end links of the watch, I did mention they are male, but they will be changing them to female. So, but in saying that, I actually like the look of the male end links. I think they suit the style and design, but it's something that a lot of people have complained about saying they want female end links. They're gonna be changing that in the production version. As far as the case back's concerned, as you can see, it's got all the required details, etching of a mermaid, it is very, very thin, which is wonderful. So that's why it adds to the actual profile of the watch, which is great. Now, moving on to the positives of this watch, that comfort, number one on the list. The comfort factor has been superb. That profile has been very thin, very easy to wear on the wrist. It's wide, but it's flat. And, and you're literally experiencing a nine and a half millimeter height with that box sapphire away. It's wonderful. So the comfort has been really good. Number two, the finishing, I think the case finishing, the functionality, everything, the tolerances seem to be really well made. I don't think Borealis has cut any corners in that department. That crown is lovely, the knurling loomed as well. So I think design-wise, they put their attention into the actual watch itself. The bracelet, spectacular. It has been great, albeit it does have a press class, but the comfort factor has not been an issue. There's just enough flex in it to give you a really good wrist experience. And the last two positives, that box sapphire crystal has been doing a great job. I like it. I do like the actual sapphire. I think it suits the aesthetic of the actual case and the fact that they've got drilled lugs. It just makes for overall strap changes a lot easier. But look guys, let me know what you think about this watch. It is screaming Omega all over the place. It is screaming vintage Omega with a little bit of a modern touch. Some people might not like it. Some people might. It's not a copy. It's not a copy of a particular model but it does take a lot of its inspiration from a few of their models i wanted to share it with you guys let me know your thoughts what you think the borealis sintra thank you for watching guys and we'll see you all in the next video